to a man who looks very much like a young Waylon Jennings during the recording of his Ladies Love Outlaws album in 1972, Mr. Craig Button. Craig, you look absolutely fantastic. Uh, how's the stampede going? It's going good. Heidi, how y'all doing? <laughs> Let's talk about... Uh, oh, man, I love this outfit on you, buddy. You look amazing. Let's talk about this Sens roster. So you lose to Brinkett, you lose 27 goals off the roster. I know a lot of Sens fans over the last couple of days, Craig, have expressed their disappointment in the return for the Debrinket trade, but I'm curious to get your thoughts on the team as it stands right now. Do you think this roster is better or worse than they were when they finished up in April? Better, much better. I'm with Mark Mathod here. I mean, I don't know what people expect. You know, what type of return are you going to get for Alex Debrinket? Bottom line, Pierre Dorian took a shot last year to try to improve the team. But despite trading for Debrinkat and, De and getting Claude Giroux signed as a free agent and all the excitement from the Senators fans, I wasn't buying last year because their goaltending wasn't very good and their defense wasn't very good. So let's now go back to why I think they're a better team, a much better team. They have a good goaltender, Corpus Salo. So that allows him to come in. They didn't have stability in the net, too many injuries. They traded for Jacob Chirkin at the trade deadline. That solidifies the blue line, takes pressure off of Thomas Shabbat. We saw how good Jake Sanderson was and is going to be. You got Travis Hamanick locked into that third pairing, which is a perfect spot for him. Then you see the emergence of Tim Stutzla. Ridley Gregg's ready to contribute. Shane Pinto showed what he's capable of doing. This is a team that now, to me, is built for the playoffs. For the playoffs. I think they're a playoff team. I don't have any question about it. Because they've been improved in the, in the sig signature areas for success in the net, on the blue line, and they have really good depth up front. They can score 27 goals from Alex Dabrinkat. Well, Josh Norris will fill that in by himself. Absolutely. Don't forget they got Dominic Kubalik. And, and they're going to have other players that are going to be able to step in. Ridley Greg will score. They'll be better defensively. I think the net here is going to be plus 40, maybe even 50 goals in terms of what they don't give up and what they still get scoring. So to me, this is a much better team. The, the obje object, objective of a manager is to make your team stronger. And that's exactly what Pierre Dorian has done this summer. Like Mark Mathot said, just watch. Let's see what this team's got. I got full faith in them. I think Pierre Dorian has done a great job in building this team into a playoff team. Craig, I never disagree with the Mathocalypse, so I'm with you, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Debrinket signs a deal, Craig, that's maybe a bit under what he could have gotten maybe on the open market. He wanted to go back home into Michigan. You heard him talk about it. His folks are happy. That's all great. But the important thing on this show is we always have to bring it back to the Maple Leafs. That's just what we do on TSN. So let's talk about <laughs> Willie. <laughs> let's talk about Willie Nylander. Um, Willie Nylander and Alex Dabrinkit over the course of their careers, Craig, basically identical points per game in the National Hockey League. I know Willie wants ten million, or that's what Craig, or that's what CJ Chris Johnston is telling us. Um, I know the Leafs would like him closer to eight, but this Debrinket contract seems like a nice little comparable, doesn't it? Well, it just depends how you want to compare it, right? I mean, if you're William Nylander, it's a four-year deal for Alex Debrinket, and keep in mind, William Nylander has basically been a second-line player. That's not the case for Alex Debrinkat. He's been a first-line player. The only, he scored 40 goals twice in his career. Alex Debrinkat's a good goal scorer. He did that playing with Patrick Kane on the power play. Nobody scored more points in the National Hockey League than Patrick Kane through the, the decade 2010 to 2020. So absolutely Alex Debrinkat benefited from that. And I don't think that William Nylander is a player that, can, that needs somebody like a Patrick Kane to get the 40 goals. I think that William Nylander can drive a lot of play on his own. And given more of an opportunity, I think that with better players, I think that William Nylander with the cap going up, I don't think there's anything unreasonable about William Nylander saying, you know what, I want 10, you want to give me eight, maybe nine's a reasonable number. Alex Debrinkat, four-year deal, goes back to Detroit. That's fine. You're, you, William Nylander's going to be a free agent next summer. So he can look at it and say, what does the free market hold for me? He's young, he can skate, he can shoot. 
And I think he's more dynamic than Alex Dabrinkat. And Alex Dabrinkat's not going to a team where he's got a Patrick Kane type player. I think Alex Dabrinkat on the sliding scale is a 28 to 36 goal scorer at best. That's where I see him at. Those are important goals. Don't get me wrong. And you need them. William Nylander to me, he's a 40 goal scorer. And he's a 40 goal scorer because he can drive play on his own. So I have no issue with William Nylander falling in at $9 million, and if he wants 10 with the cap going up next year, he very well may get it. I'm not saying the Leafs should give it to him, but I don't think that Alex Dabrinkat signing for what he signed is, is, is one that William Nealand should go, oh, I should be happy with that. I, I, I don't see it that way. Uh, yeah, very rare hometown discount. You don't uh, see it too much these days in the NHL, do you, Craig? How about the... Uh how about another team? Well, let me finish on that. Oh, sure, the, go ahead, yeah. Jay, let me finish on that. William Nylander already gave them a hometown discount on his on the contract he's on now. Yep. So what, he, he has to give him another hometown discount? I don't think so. I agree with you. And by the way, when he signed that contract, everyone thought it was too much money, but it turned out to be, a, he ended up outplaying that contract. Maybe he'll do that again. Do you think the Sens, do you think the Sens can make some noise in the Atlantic? I want to talk about another team in the Atlantic, and this is a team that a lot of people, Craig, are talking about as a team that might be the next one to make the next big step as a Stanley Cup contender, and that is the Buffalo Sabres. Dylan Cousins, Tage Thompson, the Dalai Lama, Owen Power looked great last year. This is a team that's coming, Craig, but I know you've talked about it and you agree, but you feel that there may be an elite goaltender short. There are a couple of elite goaltenders out there. There's certainly a Vesna winning goaltender out there and Connor Hellebuck, Depending on how you feel about John Gibson, terrific goaltender. We know Carter Hart may or may not have been available earlier this offseason. Perhaps Danny Briere might part with them for the right deal. Is there a particular goaltender that you feel that Kevin Adams should go out and try to get and try to solidify this roster? He's got lots of cap space. Yes, he's got Devin Levi, a good promising goaltender. He's got Uka Pekalukin in UPL, who's, who's got some promise. But this is a team that I feel, with a goaltender, can move right into the playoffs. And, and I think they could be like this year's New Jersey Devils with respect to moving right up to the, uh, the standings in the Eastern Conference and being a contender. And you look at where they're, they're short. They're short of the net. And you know, where the Ottawa Senators improved themselves was significant. And I think for Buffalo to take that step, that's what they're going to have to do. Absolutely, they need a better goaltender in the net. Somebody more ready than Devin Levi or... Uka Pekalukinen. And when you consider how good and how, and how they're built, now John Gibson has four years left on a contract that's so reasonable and so good. What's the cost to get that type of goaltender from the Anaheim Ducks? I mean, I think the Buffalo Sabres have a lot of prospects and, and they could certainly entertain what the, what the ask is from the Anaheim Ducks. Connor Hellebuck's a different animal. Connor Hellebuck, you know, with the unrestricted free agency next summer, what does he what does he command in terms of a long-term contract? I don't think you're just taking him for one year and giving up players. But both goaltenders, Gibson and Hellebuck, to me, move the Buffalo Sabres into the playoffs. Moves them into the playoffs. If they don't get that goaltender, that level of goaltender, or somewhat close to that level of goaltender, I think the Buffalo Sabres very well could be fighting down the stretch and maybe just falling short again because the goaltending and the teams in the, in the East have good goaltending and, and they're strong. And I think the New Jersey Devils are another team that have to go find a goaltender. Yep. It's interesting to me that you could have Buffalo and New Jersey vying for the same exact two goaltenders, John Gibson and Connor Hellebuck. I think each of them would dramatically and drastically improve both New Jersey's chances to become a Stanley Cup contender and Buffalo's chances to be a serious team in the East and move along the path like New Jersey did last season. And of course, Kevin Adams has to uh, get Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power signed long term as well. So he's got some work to do. Craig, I wanted to talk about the fact that we've seen a lot of restricted free agents sign long term deals this offseason. We just saw DeBrinket do it. Timo Meyer did it. Jesper Bratt, Pierre-Luc Dubois when he was traded to Los Angeles. After the salary arbitration chips fell this past week, uh, it left two, in our opinion, intriguing names open to potential offer sheets. Uh, Evan Bouchard from the Edmonton Oilers, who is now running their number one ranked power play, played all 82 games last season. And on the right, Trevor Zegras and his magnificent flow 
23 goals, 65 points last season, really moves the needle. Uh, Zegers has the most points of all remaining restricted free agents. Craig, the Ducks have, and you alluded to it, the Ducks have a lot of cap space. An, off, an offer sheet, Pat, Patty Verbeek's probably going to match that in a second with no hesitation. Edmonton has only $5 million in space as we speak right now. Is now the time, Craig, for a team out there that needs a power play quarterback, a very young one, to go out and throw an offer sheet down on Evan Bouchard? Yeah, everybody wants to throw out these offer sheets, but the whole idea of an offer sheet is to acquire a player. And offer sheets, uh, with the idea of acquiring the player, ha have magnificently failed. Uh, yeah, if your name is Dustin Penner, you succeeded in getting him if you were the Edmonton Oilers. And I I'll tell you, that, do you know the name Sean Gagnon? You know that name, Jay? Sean Gagnon? Yeah, do you know, you, you, do you know the name? We were in Dallas. We put an offer sheet in on Sean Gagnon, and we couldn't get him. We couldn't get Sean Gagnon because the Arizona Phoenix County said, no, we're matching it. As a tool to acquire players, it hasn't, it hasn't been lucrative. You have to pay so much to get the player for a team not to match it. And you talk about $5 million for the Edmonton Oilers in terms of cap space. Well, you, you can look at where Ken Holland is looking to sign him. But you can go 10% over the salary cap in the summer, which gives him an opportunity to go and be able to, you know, trade a player if, if he's got a matching offer sheet. The Edmonton Oilers are in a situation where they're trying to move ahead. They saw how good Evan Bouchard could be playing alongside Matthias Ekholm. It was a really nice pairing. Ken Holland's not letting him go. I don't care if he's got $5 million. Joe Sackick had an offer sheet. He didn't go anywhere. Keith Kachuk had an offer sheet. He didn't go anywhere. Yeah. There, there, there's been so many of these over time. Thomas Vanek, offer sheet, didn't go anywhere. And at the end of it all, while, it's, while there's this idea and the romantic idea of acquiring a player like Evan Bouchard, you're going to have to overpay so much to get him and to not allow the, the Edmonton Oilers to match that, that it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because now you're paying somebody way more than the value they're, they're distributing. Trevor Zegras, to me, is a different animal. Right. Trevor Zegras is a young player. And to me, that's the guy, if I was going to go try to make an offer sheet and try to improve my team and I had cap space, that's the guy I'd go after. That, and I'd go after him hard. And when you consider what he's been able to do to, at this early part of his NHL career, I know the Anaheim Ducks have a lot of cap space, but... You you want to make you want to make them pay to keep him? Mm -hmm. There's a place that I would be very interested because I think that Trevor Zegras could do exactly what Tim Stutzla did last year. He could jump to that 90, 95 point range. And what does that pay in the NHL? That's a ten million dollar player. And I, let me just touch on that very quickly, Craig, because they're already marketing. And when I say they, the NHL, Trevor Zegras is an American player. He's got a big personality. He's already on the front of video games. He's already got all this marketability, and he hasn't really even reached his potential as a player yet, as you've alluded to. You know it's probably coming. You know he's about to make the leap. So if you were a team like Arizona or a team that's just trying to put themselves on the map, wouldn't you throw a $10 million offer sheet at that and see if Ver Verbeek would, would say forget it? You know where I'd do it? I'd do it if I was the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes. Lots of cap space. Lots of promise. You got Connor Bedard. Oh, yeah. I'd go right after Trevor Zegras. I, I love it. <laughs> you know, Arizona has lots of good young players, but that's where I'd be going. I'd be going, like, I'd be sitting there going, how do we get Trevor Zegras? Young, young player that's ready to, 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 I think, explode. And you're right. The marketability is fantastic, which is just an add-on to the on-ice brilliance. Just an add-on to the television brilliance of uh, Craig Button. I can't say brilliance is uh, this incredible outfit he wore for us today. Craig, is there any chance that this become your signature TSN look? Any chance? No chance. I mean, <laughs> during the national final, during the, during the national final rodeo, we, we, we might do that. That's in November. We could do it during the Calgary Stampede. But th th this is where for specific times. And so, you know what? You get a little treat with the Calgary Stampede going on right now. I'm, I love going to the Stampede. It's a, it's a good time. And, you know, you get a little taste of, of, what, of what everybody looks like when they're 
on the grounds of the Calgary Stampede. It's the best time. Everybody in the country should go at least once. Craig, I hope you have a great rest of the Stampede. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yahoo! <laughs>